Chester D. Myers here, and today I've got an extra special travel video for you. If you've seen any of my travels before, then you've noticed I really like visiting different zoos and aquariums. But the place we're going to today, I've actually been before, way back in 2017. And now, myself and the boss are revisiting this zoo that changed the course of our lives forever. <clears throat> But we'll dive into that in a supplemental video. What place is worthy of such an introduction? We're heading up to the Minnesota North to experience animals that can handle the heat and the cold. And it's even home to dolphins. It's the Minnesota Zoo. Yay! So on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you? I'm like a six. I'm excited, but not as excited as I could be, I guess. How excited are you? I don't know, I don't remember much about this zoo. So like, uh, joke's on you, it's a 10. It's always a 10. Yeah, okay. The Minnesota Zoo was started by the state of Minnesota in 1978 with a mission to connect people, animals, and the natural world to save wildlife. On the 485 acres, there are more than 4,500 individual animals and 505 different species. Alongside the animals you can see are the numerous conservation efforts the zoo partners with, like collaboration with the Prairie Butterfly Conservation, the Department of Natural Resources, Tiger and Asian Wild Horse Breeding Programs, just to name a few. But enough chatter, let's see what the Minnesota Zoo has to offer. Our first stop is Discovery Bay, United Healthcare Marine Education Center. Bit of a mouthful, but I think most just call it Discovery Bay. This area is full of various marine life like tiger sharks, leopard sharks, sea stars, eels, sea dragons, and the highlight, dolphins. But why are dolphins in Minnesota? Turns out we showed up during a temporary housing for the dolphins who are originally from Brookfield Zoo. They're chilling at Minnesota Zoo's exhibit while their permanent home is being remodeled. In this pod are dolphins Allison, Allie, Kai, Lucky, Nolani, Spree, and Topeko. Spree and Allie were actually born at Minnesota Zoo, so to them this must be like visiting a childhood home. I wonder if that's what the boss is feeling like now. She's technically Minnesotan. You want to hear my dolphin impression? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven sea stars. Seaweed is moving. Oh wait, that's not seaweed, that's an animal. Boy, they sure are hungry. Raw fish does not sound good to me. Yeah, they seem to like it. Uh oh, oh they're fighting. Oh, it's a battle. No, give it back. The Tropics Trail. Let's go! Next up is the second indoor space at the zoo, the Tropics Trail. 
The Tropics Trail highlights tropical habitats around the globe, from Africa to Asia and South America. And with such a wide location variety, the trail is home to many different animal species, including fruit bats, colobus monkeys, Komodo dragons, flamingos, lemurs, hogs, hornbills, and many, many other birds. Oh, and there's even another aquatic tank to finish off the exhibit with zebra sharks. Zebra sharks are called that for their stripes along their bodies when they are first born. However, as they get older, those stripes separate and become spots, which makes me wonder how they decided on the name zebra shark, but apparently leopard shark is taken by this guy, who arguably looks more like a zebra. I'm thinking about this too hard. Let's enjoy the trail. There's something in the tree. Whoa. It's a big fat frog. This guy needs some serious dental work. I know a good orthodontist. Wow, hey fish. Fish in the tree. Let's go further in. Whoa. Okay, let's see how many we can find. Um, I see the Nicobar pigeon. Yep. And, ooh, down in the water, I see, wait, is the water one on here? I think it's the partridge. Yeah, I see the partridge. And those, the, the, the little black ones. Oh, the starlings. Yeah, I see the starlings. What lives in here? A dinosaur? Oh, I was kind of close. <gasps> Look at him, what a lad. Look at the skill, the finesse. We've seen some pretty exotic creatures. But how about something close to home? On the Minnesota Trail, you can check out everything that is native to the state. This unique area combines the outdoor wildlife with indoor viewing and is home to wolves, beavers, owls, eagles, turtles, black bears, and wolverines. Some of the highlights include the outdoor wild bird deck, which almost feels like a surreal peek into native vegetation and the wolverines mainly because the zoo recently had some wolverine kits. In fact, Minnesota Zoo is one of the hubs for wolverine breeding and conservation in the country, so it was really cool to check out a unique and local animal. You see, Chester, huh? Minnesota, distinctly different. Yeah, that describes you all right. Burn. Burn. Does a leopard frog sound like a leopard? Ooh, it kind of sounds like a leopard. Look at this guy sleep. It's like he's resting in a reverse armchair. I found my cousin. Hello, cousin. Yeah, he does this. Well, I 
I think we've covered all the indoor exhibits. Let's go and... Wait, what is that? Dino hideout? What's that? Huh, it looks like a temporary exhibit with animatronic dinosaurs and signage showing connections to dinosaurs and animals that are still alive today. Neat! I can't say no to checking out some cool dino animatronics! Look at this guy! Wow! I don't think he can close his mouth. Watch me open and close. Come on, Chester. Oh, okay. Okay, bit of a detour there, but now we're back on track to check out all the outdoor exhibits. And our first stop is Russia's Grizzly Coast. This area homes animals native to Russia, with the highlight being the grizzly bears. Also on this trail are sea otters and Amur tigers, also known as Siberian tigers. These are big animals, B-I-G big, which means they need some big space. And the Grizzly Coast definitely delivers on providing a lot of open land for the animals with lots of fun viewing places for the public. Look at this. This bear was just chilling in the water. And we got to watch him dip in his tootsies to try and kick up sticks like a toddler. I mean, it's still a dangerous wild animal, but look how adorable he is. Water looks nice. Uh, don't look behind you. Why? What's behind me? Oh, nothing. Hi. All right, Chester, spend your dollar wisely. Mm -hmm. You want to vote for bears or for big cats? Mm, bears or big cats? Bears. Can you get in there? Help. All right, now we push the button. We voted for bears. What do I do? That's a camera. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. See? Oh, whoops. Ah. Uh... My paws are sore from walking so long. We've made it to the furthest point from the zoo entrance, which is home to the Wells Fargo family farm. As you might guess, this area replicates a Midwestern style farm, with all the animals you might expect to find on a farm. Cows, sheep, pigs, and chickens. Oh, and goats as well. Can't forget about these cuties. While these are all domestic animals, they serve a purpose here at Minnesota Zoo by teaching the public where their food comes from. Speaking of which, I'm getting quite hungry myself. If we wanted to get some farm food, why didn't we just go to the state fair? I think the Minnesota State Fair is happening the same time we're here. Why are we here? Why didn't we go to the state fair? Oh well. Mmm, bacon. Chester, sorry. You guys look delicious. Chester, okay, okay. It's time to make our way back to the entrance, but there's still one brand new path we haven't checked out yet. And the best part is, this trail you can hop on at any time throughout your zoo day. Say hello to the Treetop Trail, opened within the past six months. 
This trail provides an elevated chance at viewing animal enclosures, while also providing exposure to native Minnesotan flora and fauna. I had a ton of fun looking down and seeing all of the wild turtles swimming in the lake. Look at them! They look like ants from up here. Well, little specks. But once you zoom in, bam! Turtle! This trail takes up the 1.25 miles that outlines the main course of the zoo. It can be a bit of a hike. But if you enjoy walking and seeing the animal enclosures from a new perspective, then this is definitely a path you should check out. And if you can't make it all the way around, not to worry. We hopped onto the trail from the intersection where we left the farm, and we were able to make it all the way back to the front. Besides, what am I going to experience watching a tiger play like this anywhere else? Look at him go at that enrichment boomer ball. He's got a big ball he's playing with down there. He keeps dropping it in the water. Get it! Get it! All in all, the Minnesota Zoo provides experiences you might not consider when imagining a zoo. What it may lack in the typical African savanna wildlife, it makes up for in expansive exhibits for animals used to the harsher winter conditions that Minnesota is known for most of the year. If you'd like to learn more about Minnesota Zoo, there's a link in the description below. Also listed somewhere on the screen right now is our supplemental video, where you can hear about the boss's experiences interning at Minnesota Zoo in 2017, and what has changed or stayed the same since then. This is Chester D. Myers, signing off and ready to rest my paws for the day. My pads are aching. Okay, so we started here. Mm -hmm. We went there. Uh-huh. Uh, then we went here, uh-huh, we went here, mm-hmm, we went there, and then we went back, and then around here, we went all there, all the way there, and now we're back here again for the end.